Metrosoft series of tutorials on how to use the Z directory. This is lesson number four. In this episode, we'll look at how to create a client and a server program. So this is a little bit more complicated than our typical lesson so far. I'll copy and paste from an existing source code file so that we can uh, move along quickly. I'm also going to show you how to do time and date operations. Uh, what we're going to do here is to create basically a time server. It will return with the current time. A pre-configured Microsoft Visual Studio 2005 project. And this is the code for the server. Starting from the top is right there. And it's about 100 lines. It's a minimal amount of code really to create a server that really does anything. Right, here we go. Let's throw in the header files that we need. The Z directory header files start with Z underscore. And in the case of a server, we need to instantiate a class. Well, we need to define a class that's subclass from server object. And I'm calling it time server. There's about three member functions that we need to fill in. And there's also a, an object message trans socket address. I'll explain that in a minute. And we'll start with a main driver, main. Since it's a Z directory program, it starts with Z start and ends with Z finish. I'll exit out with either, either a 0 or a 1. And here's another little thing that uh, might help you out. I'm going to use an INI file to set the host and the port number for the server. The Z directory provides you an INI file object. Just include the header file for it, zini file.h. We'll create an instance, my INI. We'll set the name of the file to server.ini. What the file looks like, it's right here. It's the same format as most any Microsoft.ini file for initialization. So we have a block section, we'll call it general, host equals localhost, port is 5050. And we load it with the load member function, and if it succeeds, it returns zero. And the way to use it is to call the value member function for the parameter you want and pass it to a string object. So I'm making a two string objects, my host and my port, or the port is going to be a, the port's going to be an integer, so we're going to convert that in a minute. Let's create a time server object instance. We only need one, it's a one server per program. And now we need to set the port, the input port that the server is going to wait on. Now, in order to do that, we'll set up some variables. Basically, a message trans socket address gets the host and port number. We pass that. Now, notice here we have we have the port number in my port, a string object. To convert it to an integer, which you need for calling set port, we'll use a z stir to int. This is a layer zero function. So it doesn't belong to an object and we need to pass to it a char star. So we'll take the string object and we'll call the data member function. Now that'll return a const char star. And the return value of this function will be the, the integer value, of whatever's in the string. Give the object the message trans socket address object to the server with a set channel member function, which will set the error variable IE, the last parameter, to uh, zero if it succeeds, and non zero if it doesn't. It's such a simple function, we won't check that. And I'm going to do some background processing, and that's what the function periodic work is for. So basically the server will 
wait a certain length of time for input on any port and if there isn't then it'll call periodic work. Now notice we can also configure servers to have output ports or input and output ports so that way we can have a cluster of servers that bounce a message back and forth between each other. Now in setting up the periodic work, the background processing, we're going to use a time span object. That's a length of time and the length of time is four seconds as you can see in this case. We're simply going to run the server and we do it by calling the run member function. Right now. Unfortunately we need to fill out a couple more functions. Remember that one of the functions we have is process message. Process message virtual function needs to be filled out for every server and this is this is where the meat of the server is. This is where it gets the incoming message from this last parameter SIN string input and the message trans address object and it tells where the message came from. Now in a real server uh, there's probably going to be some processing time and we're going to emulate that by calling the sleep function Z sleep. Now you're wondering why we're using Z sleep instead of simply sleep. Well in the Unix guys it's a lowercase s in the Microsoft world that's an uppercase s and um, this is one of the advantages of the Z directory. You don't have to mess with remembering that and porting and all that. Just call this function. It'll work on both Unix and Microsoft platforms. So no changes. Now, when the input comes in, I just want to I want to print this out to the console so we know that the message came in. And I'm going to set up some string time objects, T now and T2. And I'm going to set T now to the current time by just calling member function now. And if the client sends a string that says simply now, that means just return the current time. However, if it's not now, we're going to assume that the string is a date. And we're going to parse that date, we're going to compare it to the current time, and we're going to print how much time has elapsed. If it's ahead of the current time, we'll look at that and, we'll, and print uh, how much time it's going to be until that time or vice versa. We're going to make sure that it's a, an actual time representation with the contents of the input string. And we're going to call this function stir is valid date. This is a static function, you can tell. And we're going to create a time span object and if the current if the time path if the time passed in is after the current time we're going to compute the difference and we're going to print out what that difference is right here this is actually like taking the absolute value the, the terminology between diamond time and date is one and the same So the output message will be the current time is, and then we're going to we'll concatenate the current time as, in, as found in the string time object t underscore now. And we're going to simply dump that out to send message. And that's the end of this function. A couple more functions we need to declare. couple more functions we need to define. One is process disconnect. In this case we're not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to print a message saying there was a disconnect and what the port number is. And then we're going to call the server, the parent class is process disconnect. It'll handle uh, the actual closing of the channel. And the periodic work, that background processing that's going to happen every four seconds, what we're going to do, we're simply going to print a dot and with a and we're going to flush it so that we can see this every four seconds in real time. Hopefully that's uh, all the code for the server. A very bare bones minimal server simply gets the current time. 
All right, we compiled and linked. We type my server. Let's see if it runs. All right, while that's running, let's go and, uh, and create a client. And here's my project. It's Visual Studio 2005. So code is empty. I'm copy this in chunks. In this case, we don't have to include the server object because it's a client. It, it's more low level, so hence I'm all I'm and I'm going to have some error processing in case there's failures. I'm, I'm going to use these values for uh, indicating what that is, and I'm going to make a I'll have a function called bad, which will simply exit out. All right, Z. Here's our main driver. String that we're going to send to the server. We create a message trans instance. And we need this message trans socket address object where we're going to configure the address that we're going to give to the message trans object. And what that looks like, instead of really using an INI file in this case, uh, and to see some variation in how this thing runs, I'm going to, if there's no command line arguments, I'm going to use now, which the server interprets as just get the current time. Otherwise, I'm going to get the, the date from the command line is simply the, the only parameter now up, a, up above here you notice that I'm doing the connect of all this uh, let's move that there connect is the first thing a client needs to do do the get, get the message from the server, and then we'll do a disconnect. So the server, excuse me, the client's really straightforward. We do a connect, we put the message, we get the reply, we do the disconnect. Now the one thing I have to caution you about is that we're using a force size. This this will expand the string object's buffer to 800 characters, and we're going to pass that value to the get function. It, the message transport get function, it doesn't resize the string object internally. You, you have to pre-size pre it to, so that it, it accommodates the, uh, the message that comes from the server. If not, it's going to fail. That's one of the nuances here. And if it succeeds, it'll return zero, and we're going to print out server says and what the message is. And that's the whole client. And also we're going to add this function bad to handle the uh, problems here. It's basically it'll print out messages and do an exit. So that's our that's our client. Let's see if it compiles. Yeah right. Let's go to the window for the I gotta have a separate window for my client. Uh, let's run my client with no arguments which should pass should generate now. And remember there's a sleep of two seconds. And we're, we're emulating a real server. And as you can see here the client came back and with a message from the server with a time and date formatted April 25th. It's almost two in the morning. I'm working late to get this video out to you. And there's there it is again. And you can see the uh, the time is uh, about 10, 20 seconds after that. And then the third time we're going to run it, we're going to put in uh, let's say July 4th, 2012. So that's about April. And the message here from the server says it's two months, eight days, 22 hours, two minutes, 34 seconds ahead of the current time. Now let's go backwards in time. Let's go July 4th, 2011. 
So that's um, whatever it is. We'll let the machine figure it out. Yep, nine months and 21 days. So there you have it, client server.